and then to knock everybody out. Okay. Yeah, because he's probably going to be like right here. Okay. And this is picture from outside here. <laughs> I can scoop this thing over a little bit too. Is that stand going to be there? It's hard to tell with those people there too, but um, if, if you're stand back here a minute, please. If you're um, towards that end of the podium, I think it's usually should. on the floor. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be able to see your view. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. I moved this over. So just oh, so okay. Do we need that TV screen a little bit again, or is it okay? What? Do you, you want this movie, the TV screen moved at all? Are you talking to me? Yeah. No, no.
so true in Wisconsin, isn't it? Kathy Dukach, and we were honored to have served as the co-chairs of the search committee to choose our new settled pastor. We want to welcome and thank everyone for coming to the celebration of the installation of our new pastor, Reverend Jacob Nault. We have members here from the Wisconsin UCC Conference and Northeast Association, individuals from Reverend Jacob's home church in Nina, 
Uh, and also members from the Oshkosh UCC Church where Reverend Jacob filled in for sabbatical. We have some participating clergy and of course members from our own congregation. So welcome. We also want to recognize our search committee who brought many, many talents to the table, worked tirelessly and never hesitated to do their part in this incredible search. They continue to serve today with refreshments for our reception after this service. Be sure to stay. The members of our search committee were Sandra Champion, Haley Hunick, Christina Newman, Diane Prey, Paul Reynolds, Becky Smith, and Penny Wagner, who cannot be here this afternoon. Would our committee please stand and be recognized? One housekeeping issue to mention is the main bathrooms out there are under renovation. There is a unisex bathroom on, down the hallway here in the office wing and additional facilities way back in the education wing. So uh, if you're needing, that's where you gotta go. <laughs> um, this is an exciting and important day as it celebrates the conclusion of our search process and it gives us the opportunity to give thanks for our new pastoral leadership. And it once again welcomes Pastor Jacob to our community, to the association and the conference. We have been blessed with a wonderful new pastor and with God's guidance, we look forward to the future together. Let, let, us, let us give, give thanks, thanks as we begin, begin this celebration of our installation of Reverend Jacob. Jacob. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Coley Bativia. I'm the pastor at Grace Congregational United Church of Christ up in Two Rivers. And I am also the chairperson of what's called the Committee for Placement and Transition in the Northeast Association of the Wisconsin Conference. Quite a mouthful, I know. But basically, basically, I'm part of the team that oversees um, our, our students and those who are training to be pastors while they're in the process. Um, and so I, I am here this morning on behalf of that team, uh, several others who you'll see um, during the service too when we get to the, kind of the official installation part. Um, but I just want to say greetings on behalf of the association and that we are so delighted to be here with you to celebrate this day uh, on the Placement and Transition Committee. We've seen Jacob grow over the years as he's gone through schooling and internships and all the other things that he has done to brought him, bring him to this point. And we are just so delighted um, for you, your congregation, to have called Jacob and to be able to celebrate with you today. Uh, we are grateful to be here. Thanks be to God. Amen.
again, welcome to Waupun. If you're able to do so, please rise. Join me in the call to worship. Like Moses, we are called by God to care for those in need. How will we, res will we respond to this call? As we celebrate the partnership of this pastor with this congregation, we pray with confidence that God will bless their work and their relationship. Please join me in our opening prayer. God of new beginnings, we worship today with joy and gladness at the partnership of this pastor and these people gathered here. Help us continue to spread your love in a hurting world. Help us listen for your voice, which calls us to action. Help us love one another as Christ loved the church. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
our reading today comes from Exodus 3, 1 through 15. Let us listen for God's word. Moses was taking care of the flock for his father-in-law Jethro, Midian's priest. He led his flock out to the edge of the desert, and he came to God's mountain called Horeb. The Lord's messenger appeared to him in a flame of fire in the middle of a bush. Moses saw that bush was in flames, but it didn't burn up. Then Moses said to himself, let me check out this amazing sight and find out why the bush isn't burning up. When the Lord saw that he was coming to look, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. Moses said, here I am. Then the Lord said, don't come any closer. Take off your sandals because you are standing on holy ground. He continued, I am the God of your father Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God. Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I've clearly seen my people oppressed in Egypt. I've heard their cry of injustice because of their slave masters. I know about their pain. I've come down to rescue them from the Egyptians in order to take them out of that land and bring them to a good and broad land, a land that's full of milk and honey, a place where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites all live. Now the Israelites' cries of injustice have reached me. I've seen just how much the Egyptians have oppressed them. So get going. I'm sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I to go to Pharaoh and to bring the Israelites out of Egypt? God said, I'll be with you, and this will show you that I'm the one who sent you. After you bring the people out of Egypt, you will come back here and worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I now come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they are going to ask me, What's God's name? What am I supposed to say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. So say to the Israelites, I am has sent you, has sent me to you. God continued, Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, Abraham's God, Isaac's God, and Jacob's God, has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is how all generations will remember me.
Good afternoon. When Jacob shared with me the text for today, I just kind of had to smile. Because I believe absolutely anyone who has ever wrestled with some sort of a sense of calling from God has certainly referenced this scripture. This scripture specifically comes to mind. And then, of course, the story of Jonah, Jonah and the whale. When I myself was wrestling with my call initially, there was a period of time when my son refused to go fishing with me. <laughs> Honestly, from my perspective, I was much more concerned about trying to identify the burning bush within my own life than any fish innards ever entered into the picture. And it was really ironic. Because during this time of my life, I found myself chaperoning a confirmation trip. And the confirmation trip went, and I'll confess, I do not remember the name of the church. It was somewhere, I'm going to say, on the northwest side of Milwaukee. It was not a UCC church. We were trying to give the children more of an exposure to a variety of worship styles. And we came into the sanctuary. It was an evening worship service. We came into the sanctuary, and as I was trying to do my job as a chaperone and get all the children to be kind of settled and respectful, the pastor who was leading the entire group gave me an elbow. And she looked, she motioned toward the very front of that sanctuary. And the entire wall of the sanctuary was one large, amazing stained glass image of a burning bush. And the pastor nudged me and winked and asked, what more did I need? 
And despite that, I kept, I continued to wrestle with my call. I really believe in full confession that if we had gone out of that church that evening and on the sidewalk next to the church, we would have encountered our own burning bush. I more than likely would have gone back inside looking for a fire extinguisher or a phone to call 911. The reality is, when us human beings wrestle with that sense of call, I'm going to claim it's universal, perhaps it's only me, but we crave, I think we crave a certain level of certainty. We'd really like to know that we were making the right choices. We'd really like to know what's going to come next. We'd like to know what the plan is. We'd like some assurances that we're on the right path. And I really believe we can all kind of relate to Moses during these scripture readings. I certainly can relate to him. I'm also honestly in complete awe of his obedience. And I'd like us to spend a little bit of time looking at his interactions with God. I'd like to start where the scripture begins. It says he was out at the edge of the desert. Do you recall, Moses was really trying to keep a pretty low profile. Previously, he had made some choices in Egypt. He had witnessed an Egyptian abusing the Israelite slaves, and the Egyptian ended up being killed. And so he left Dodge. He went out into the desert. He found a new relationship, which resulted in a new father-in-law. And he was really, really trying to just mind his own business. Ask me how that works with God. <laughs> he was simply trying to tend to the sheep to do his job. But there was something, there was something off in the distance that caught his eye. It's really funny how God works that way. God has a tendency to catch our eye. God has a tendency to catch our attention. Perhaps it's someone who's in need. Or perhaps it's something off in the landscape that really makes us go, wow. Or some, some sort of an internal stirring. I venture to say that this rarely, if ever, really lines up with our assumption of how things are supposed to be. And God really has a way of intersecting with our life in some really surprising in unexpected ways. You know, it's interesting. I have read this scripture countless times. And it was when I was looking at it again, once again, this last week, there's a piece in there that really caught my attention. It said, The Lord's messenger appeared to him in the flame. The Lord's messenger appeared to him in the flame. That really jumped out at me. I think, at least when I was wrestling with my call, I kind of short-circuited that piece of the scripture. Because I was so focused on the flame. And the reality is, the flame is simply the vessel, the vehicle the means that the message was being contained. The flame wasn't the word of God in and of itself. And I really wonder how much time I spent looking for that flame instead of honestly listening to the message that was being conveyed. When I'm thinking about this, I'm really wondering, Jacob, what at this call, really caught your attention. 
Perhaps I know this congregation has a really, really strong relationship with our camping programs in this conference. That's how Jacob and I got to know each other. So perhaps it was their relationship with outdoor ministry that caught your attention. Or I know this congregation historically has had a really strong youth program, and I know that's something that is near and dear. Jacob gets really excited working with that type of age group. He was a wonderful, wonderful summer staffer when I was out at the camp. Or who knows? Maybe it was simply a one-to-one conversation that he had with someone perhaps in this room or an element of your music ministry that initially caught his attention. I think whatever that was, we're all grateful for it. We're all, we all can give thanks for whatever that flame was that originally caught your attention. We also hear in our scripture, and I believe the story that continues throughout the book of Exodus is familiar with us, that we know that this inner, initial interaction between God and Moses certainly was not the end of the story. It was truly just the beginning. And we hear in the story, right, maybe perhaps what makes it really rich is that there's a time in which Moses protests God's choices. God, you got to be kidding. I don't have the skill set you need. And God says, that's okay. I'm not leaving you. I'm going to continue to accompany you. And Moses tries once again, God, I've got a, a, some sort of a speech impediment. You really got to, there's got to be somebody better than me to make this happen. And once again, God comes to his side and says, that's okay. Your brother, that was the brother's fault. Your brother has agreed to help you to make some of that happen. And even after Moses relents and says, okay, let's try to make this happen, right? We know that after he accepts the call, life doesn't become some sort of a cakewalk. There are multiple significant challenges along the way, right? He sees an early one. First of all, he has to try to convince these slaves of this harebrained idea that they're better off following him than staying where they are. And God has a solution to make that happen. And then after the slaves are convinced, he has to go to Pharaoh. And we know it takes a significant amount of time and effort to make that happen. And then, right, they begin the journey out of Egypt, and it seems like Pharaoh has a change of heart. Sends his army after them once again. And that's that whole magnificent thing where they divide the waters. Remember that little bit of the story? And then even after they have left the range of the Egyptians, those Israelite slaves, time after time after time again, question whether or not this crazy guy who's leading them wandering around without a map, no GPS, no nothing, if he's really the guy who should be in charge. I've often wondered how many times along that journey our leader was really, really tempted just simply to go back to those sheep, to try to live his quiet life while riding completely underneath the radar. We know that doesn't work. If you remember the story of Jonah, that didn't work so good for him. God had a solution for that even. I think the real, one of the real values of scripture such as this is we have something that we can all learn from stories such as this. The reality is, 
I really wish, Jacob, I could tell you that, you know, once all this commotion is over with, you're on easy street. <laughs> and you're good to go for, what, the next 40 years or whatever it takes. <laughs> the reality is, just like in Moses' journey, the challenges are going to continue to arise. And I really, really urge both Jacob and the rest of you sitting here today to remember what they did in this story. They listened to God. They made God room for God in whatever decision flow charts they were constructing. It's also important to hear they were more than willing to challenge God, to remind God that, hey, this is your crazy idea. Or perhaps, perhaps in doing that, we need to remind ourselves that it's not our idea, that it's God's idea that we're trying so desperately hard to try to implement. I think the real trouble begins when we start to believe that perhaps we are in control and we're not doing God's work. I urge the people of this congregation to be willing to wrestle with the crazy ideas that your pastor is going to come up with. <laughs> I urge you to wrestle with them, not because they're Jacob's crazy ideas. I urge you to wrestle with them because that is the way our God works. Remember, God is the one who took a man who was a murderer and selected him to lead his people out of slavery. I know this man well enough. He is going to come up with some crazy ideas. <laughs> he used to work for me. <laughs> when that happens, it is your task as a community to discern the difference between them being his crazy ideas and the crazy ideas that our God throws out to us each and every day. You need to figure out if it's God speaking or if it's Jacob who has had too much coffee or not enough sleep. I've experienced both of those with your pastor. Question him. Question him. But then I urge you, I beg you to also pause. To pause and listen to the response and try to remember God's role in all of this. We are called to a hard and difficult process. It requires some wrestling with God. That has been occurring since the days of Moses. And if we truly believe that God is still stirring within our communities today, that crazy stuff is going to continue to happen. And if we perhaps are crazy enough, or perhaps have the courage enough to say, okay, God, let's go. Some truly amazing and faith-filled things have the potential to happen. Amen.
Today, as always, when we celebrate ordinations and installations, an offering will be received for the Wisconsin Conference United Church of Christ Seminarian Fund. Isaiah heard God ask, whom shall I send? And Isaiah responded, send me, Lord. We rejoice for all the women and men who answer God's call, just like Isaiah. Many who want to respond to God's call to ministry struggle with the rising costs of theological education. We can help support new and emerging leaders in the church by providing scholarship aid to members in discernment in our conference. Gifts at the time of a pastor's ordination and installation allow the Wisconsin Conference to provide these scholarships. We celebrate your new pastor today, and we make sure that there will be a next pastor to serve your congregation just as faithfully. Conference scholarships, along with financial aid from the seminaries and the students' personal funds, provide crucial support to financing the theological education and preparation of persons who will serve in ministry. In any given year, there are 30 to 40 members in discernment in from our conference. Your generosity ensures that we can continue to provide scholarships. Gifts can also be made online. Please contact the conference office for that link, or if you're on Zoom, follow the link in the Zoom chat box. We will soon be sharing Holy Communion together. If you did not receive a prepackaged communion cup, please find one at the back of the sanctuary or raise your hand and an usher can bring one to you. And if you're joining us from home or another place, please take this time to prepare the communion elements so you can uh, commune with us. Thank you.
Please join me in our prayer of dedication. Gracious God, we give thanks for the many gifts you have given us. Help us use them for the sake of your love and liberation in the world. Amen. We will now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. We recognize that there are many different translations of the Lord's Prayer, and we invite you to use the translation that's most meaningful to you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Northeast Association of the Wisconsin Conference of the United Church of Christ greets you in the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church in heaven and on earth. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Union Congregational United Church of Christ, under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, has called Reverend Jacob Nult as pastor and teacher and respectfully requests the Northeast Association install him in these ministries among us according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ. The Northeast Association has reviewed the request of Union Congregational United Church of Christ. We have prayerfully considered and examined Jacob and we are pleased to install him as your pastor and teacher. Before I do that, is the name of that church correct? Okay, because it says Sheboygan, and I know we're not in Sheboygan. <laughs> we are in Waupon, so that's where we are. So Jacob, servant of God, we invite you to come forward in Waupon as a sign of your acceptance of the call to this office. the action of an association of the United Church of Christ in cooperation with a local church, the called setting, and the pastor. Installation confirms and celebrates the covenantal relationship among these partners. Installation is a sign that these covenantal partners are committed to share mutually in the mission of the United Church of Christ and of the Ecumenical Church. Hear these words from the Apostle Paul. We beg you, our kindred in faith, to pay proper respect to those who work among you, who guide and instruct you in the Christian life. Treat them with the greatest respect and love because of the work that they do. Be at peace among yourselves. We urge you, our brothers, warn the idle, encourage the timid, help the weak, be patient with all. 
see that no one repays back wrong for wrong, but at all times make it your aim to do good to one another and to all people. Be joyful always. Pray at all times. Be thankful in all circumstances. This is what God wants of you in your life in Christ Jesus. Amen. Dear friends of Union Congregational United Church of Christ, you have declared that having gathered under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you have called Reverend Jacob Knoll to minister in this place and time as pastor and teacher, and that it now receives him as appointed by God for this ministry. The Northeast Association of the United Church of Christ has declared that he has met all the necessary conditions for installation to this office. Jacob, seeing that you are called to ordained ministry by the grace of God and that Union Congregational United Church of Christ has been led to call you as their pastor and teacher, are you willing to enter into this covenant with its members who are one in Christ with us in the Northeast Association? I am willing, and I promise to serve faithfully, fulfilling the ministries of the pastoral office according to the faith and order of the United Church of Christ. Members of Union Congregational United Church of Christ, Lafon, not Sheboygan, will those who are here and able rise and affirm your covenant with Jacob? We, the members... You may be seated. Members of the Northeast Association, please rise in body or spirit and affirm your covenant with Reverend Jacob Nault and Union Congregational United Church of Christ. We, the members of the Northeast Association of the United Church of Christ, gather with you, Reverend Jacob Nault, and with your called setting, Union Congregational United Church of Christ, as a sign of our covenant and in celebration of our mutual ministry in Christ's name. You may be seated. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have called your servants to make promises before you. Now enable us to keep our vows that we may remain steadfast in faith and fruitful in every good work. We pray that your servants, Reverend Jacob Nault, to whom the care of your people in this church is now committed, pour out your Holy Spirit on his ministries and on those with whom he serves, and on all the churches in the Northeast Northeast Association that our mutual ministry may be served with all faithfulness and diligence and courage. Grant us the spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. Make our ministry a means of awakening the careless, strengthening the faithful, comforting the afflicted, building up your church and converting sinners to you. Guard us against the snare of temptation that we may be kept pure in heart, fervent in spirit, and valiant against evil. And at the last, by your grace, receive us in your eternal home, where with you and the Holy Spirit, Christ reigns in glory one God, forever and ever. Amen. 
In the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the Northeast Association of the Wisconsin Conference of the United Church of Christ, I declare that you, Jacob, are duly installed as pastor and teacher of Union Congregational UCC. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God indeed. <laughs> so we now enter into a time of sharing, um, sharing Holy Communion. Uh, I am uh, I'm so grateful to be able to share this with all of you. Uh, <clears throat> a reminder that this is an open table. This table does not belong to Union Congregational Church. It certainly doesn't belong to me. Um, but by the grace of God, it belongs to Christ. And Christ is the host and uh, invites all of us to, uh, to participate. So if you, don't have, uh, if you don't have a communion cup, uh, please make sure you get one um, as we go through this liturgy. Communion, community of saints, beloveds of God, we are invited to come and gather at the table of love and liberation to feast on the dreams of God, to be nourished by but a taste of what God desires to do among us. God calls us from institutional halls of power, from shelters and the streets. God calls us from classrooms and pulpits, bars and prison cells. God whispers, come and live abundantly, turning from all that claims blessings flow from money, power, or control. Come and love relentlessly, following Christ on paths of uncertainty, taking risks for one another, calling down unjust power from its throne and lifting up the lowly, the impoverished, the burdened. To answer the call of Christ is to find ourselves no matter our social location, choosing to align ourselves with the causes of the marginalized, the oppressed, the outcast, and the isolated, with the faith that together we might enflesh new possibilities of healing, of connection, of freedom from all that destroys. When these are the desires of our hearts, we open ourselves to God. In this meal, we remember the life, death, and resurrection of the one who still takes on flesh among us today. On the night that he would be arrested, Jesus gathered his friends and companions. In the midst of a tense and dangerous time, they found each other at table, connecting over the story of God and flesh among them. And as they did so, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God, and broke the bread, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was over, he also took the cup, gave thanks to God, and shared it with his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so we pray.
the gifts of God are given for the people of God. Please share the, the gifts of God from where you are. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. God, by the bread of heaven and cup of life, you make us one body. Bind us together by your spirit that we might live into your hopes for us, a community centered in Christ and rich in compassion, commitment, courage, and care. May it be so. Now please rise if it's comfortable for you to do so and join us in our closing hymn. This is number 577, Sing a New Church into Being. We will be singing verses 1, 3, 4, and 5. receive these words of benediction. May you go from this place empowered to do justice, to love all creation, and to care for the oppressed. Together, let us follow God with joy.
because God liberates us, loves us, and leads us to co-create the world that God wills. And now may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Go in peace and join us for the reception right back there in the Fellowship Hall. Amen.